This is Steven Seifert. I'm going to show you how to play Terry McCafferty and David Beatty's Lil Double Bass. It's tuned like a mountain dulcimer, D-A-D, but it's two octaves lower, which puts you in the range of an upright bass. It's very cool if you're playing groups of two or more, you can back up the way a bass player would back up a group. And this gives forward momentum to the group. It really fleshes out the sound. It gives everyone a big full sound. It works great for um, old-time fiddle tunes, old-time songs, folk songs, hymns, bluegrass, and really just about anything. But what I'm going to cover in this video is how to play this thing. I want to introduce you to some of the techniques that I think will give you a good sound and help you be part of the band in a way that people really are going to um, not want to give up on the nights you can't be at the jam. So uh, first technique I need to show you is with the right hand. We often want to play one note at a time on this instrument, almost all the time, which means the other two strings need to be silent. So watch my right hand here. I'm going to pluck the bass string over and over. Notice that my thumb is laying sideways across the middle and the melody. It's not pushing, it's just lightly touching so that they cannot vibrate. There's also something else going on here. Watch what I do with my index finger to create the silence between the notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now you could let the string ring the whole time. One and two and three, four and one and two and three and four. And sometimes I do that, but a lot of the time I like to put these rests in between the notes to let the other musicians in the room shine through. Watch now how I pluck on one and three and I mute on two and four. One and two and three and four and one and two three and four now i'm going to pluck the middle string and notice how my right hand is silencing the outer strings now while i pluck the middle one and two three and four and one and two and three and now the melody string one two and three and four and one and two three and four Isolating the string you're plucking is a big part of this technique. And you do it different ways for different strings and different notes. And you just need to give yourself some time. I think you'll find uh, if you just keep this as your goal to, to only hear one string at a time, you will start to work out what to do with the other two. But what you want to avoid is not dealing with the other two at all. Something like this. It can end up getting quite noisy sometimes. But be patient with yourself. Now, it's not just the right hand that's involved in this kind of thing. The left hand also plays a role in isolating the string you're wanting to hear. So I'm going to play a little bit. I want you to watch both hands. You might want to rewind this video a few times. And um, just notice all the different ways both hands are sometimes touching strings to get them to be quiet. Keep in mind, I'm not pressing uh, when I want silence. I'm just lightly touching. If I press, I'm going to hear a note. So play a little bit. One and two and three and So sometimes with that left hand, I'm just lightly touching the strings to get them to be quiet. And sometimes the right hand does it. This takes a little getting used to, but you'll get it. Let's talk about fretting with the left hand. Now this looks like it has frets like a regular dulcimer, but what looks like frets to you are just 
um, inlay markers. These are not frets, they're just lines to help you know where the notes are. The dulcimer is fretless in a sense, so that if you want, you can get this type of sound, which is kind of cool. But there are little channels in there where frets would be roughly. And if you can really look up close, you'll see these pretty easily. You know, on a regular dulcimer, we put our finger to the left of the fret. That's where these channels are. So if you look at the uh, second fret marking here, which is just inlay, just to the left of that is this channel. And you basically want to press right into that channel. And the edges of that channel do the job of a fret you will get an accurate note. So they could have left these out and you can play them fretless, which is actually pretty cool. But these channels, these little grooves, they help you more easily be in tune most of the time, especially if you're not used to a fretless instrument. So this kind of has the best of both worlds. I want you to hear something. If, if I'm fretting this string and, I, and I'm right over the channel, you get a pretty good note. If your finger starts to wander to the left, it starts to rattle. Listen to this. So you want to make sure you're right in the channel. And that, it took me about 15 minutes to start to really get used to that. But it was a new uh, sensation. If you wander to the right, if your finger rolls to the right a little bit, the note starts to go sharp. Now, the good news is, I think on lower frequency instruments like this, um, if you're not right on the note, sometimes it's it works out pretty well. I mean, the upright bass players don't have frets, and they get, a, get away with it. So, um, But what you're going to want to do, um, as you're learning to isolate the one string you're trying to pluck, you also want to make sure you're getting right in those grooves. What's cool about this instrument, the grooves are the notes we usually play on a regular dulcimer. There's even a groove here for a one and a half fret, even though there is no inlay for it. So here's O, one, one and a half, uh, two, three. These big wide spaces that don't have grooves, like the first space, the fourth and fifth, you can just place your finger roughly in the middle of it and you'll get the chromatic notes. It's kind of like having a chromatic dulcimer, but not if you don't want to. And this allows you to play a lot of notes that match what you're going to need as a bass player. So I'm going to move on to what to play. But your homework is to be patient with yourself, use both hands to make sure you're only hearing one string at a time. Most of the time, that's what you want. And also, get used to these grooves. On to what to play. Now, of course, there's bass in all kinds of music. Uh, you, you can just listen to anything and you will hear low frequency, uh, whether it's country or jazz or just about anything. I'm gonna cover simple music, folk music. Um, try to show you how to handle the simplest stuff you're not going to need to think fret numbers so much you're going to need to think note names and the names of chords and i will keep this fairly simple the good news is you really don't have to do much other than the simple things to really make a group sound better i think sometimes people think a bass player's job is not that interesting but some of the best bass players don't play a lot of notes, but they they pick things out very well and they play them very well. And it's kind of like being a servant a little bit, you know, to serve others. That's kind of what you're doing as a bass player. Um, and you end up really trying to be reliable, steady, helpful, that kind of thing. Um, I will say if you're too loud... People won't tell you sometimes, but it bugs folks. So I think it's good to err on the side of not being loud enough. Uh, people may ask you to turn up. That's a good thing. 
But uh, don't start on the high end because that can, they will run you off. <laughs> so, And there's something else about this kind of uh, jam etiquette thing. Usually there's one bass player. So if you show up and someone else is playing bass, you're going to want to let them know that you play bass too. And you're going to have to coordinate taking turns, more or less. All right, so what do you play? Well, the main thing you need to know with all this stuff is what chord is everyone on in a song? Something like Bile Them Cabbage, they're playing three main chords most of the time. D, G, and A. D major, G major, A major. And the simplest bass playing involves just playing the very notes that are in the names of the chords. When everyone's on a D major chord, you're playing a D note. When they're on a G major chord, you're playing a G note. When they're on an A major chord, you want to play an A note. So how do you know where the notes are? You're going to have to look at the reference sheet and you're going to have to memorize this. But it's not too bad. Um, you could start with just the fattest string, the one farthest from you. You could even start with the one closest to you. They're the same notes, an octave apart, D, open. But watch this on the, um, the bass string. I think it would be really good to memorize these notes first. D, E, F sharp, G, a, B, C, C sharp, D. Now, I didn't use the one and a half yet, the F. I just went with the notes that match the inlay that represents where frets would be. Memorize these notes, but in particular, there's three that I think you really want to get first. D, G, and A. D is open. Three is G. Four is A. So many tunes we do in a dulcimer jam are in the key of D, and those are the three chords we're using most of the time. So I'm going to play a little Botham Cabbage, and I'm going to try to do it simply. Uh, one, two, and we'll start with a D major chord. One, and two, and three, and four. Botham Cabbage. Here comes the G down. Boys, back to D. Turn them ho a round. Check it. Back to D. The only song G that I can sing A is bow them cabbage down. Notice I was muting. So I was touching the middle and the melody with my thumb very lightly just to keep them quiet. I did all the playing on the bass, used my index finger to pluck and mute. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Um, I'm going to do that again a little faster. Bow them cabbage down, boys. Turn. When you hear this by yourself, it's kind of hard to really figure out what you're going to do once you're in a room with a bunch of people. So find somebody to practice with. And I'll tell you what, in a pinch, it would be a good idea to take some of the tunes you know the best, just make a little video with your phone of you playing that on a regular dulcimer, and then listen back to that video and play along on your dice. So the first step is going to be D, G, and A, but then I think you want to learn the other notes. Uh, for instance, if you're in the key of G, there's going to be a lot of G major, C major, and D major. So G major, uh, you do a G at three on the bass, C at six on the bass, and the D could be uh, open bass or up to seven. I try to stick to the lower notes I think when I'm working with someone new and I'm trying to get them to learn the notes 
basically learn O to six and a half on the base and O to six and a half on the middle. By learning the base, you will also know the melody string. And it's good to know the middle. Let me show you what the middle is, just where the fret markers are. Open is A, one is B, two is C sharp, three is D, four is E, five is F sharp, six is G, six and a half G sharp, seven is back to A. So this is gonna be level two for you. <laughs> we just did level one, here comes level two. When you're doing Bile Them Cabbage, you could just play the notes all on that one bass string. But you can start to play the D note, the G note, and the A note on different strings for variety. And this can really help a group not sound like they're just doing the same thing over and over again. Just by the bass player doing something different, the whole group feels a little different. So let's look at D major. Where are all the Ds right now? Well, I have a D on the open bass. I have a D on the middle at three. I also have a D on the melody open. That's three Ds. I also have a D up on the bass at seven and on the melody string at seven. For the G, I've got the third fret on the bass string. I've got the sixth fret on the middle string, the third fret on the melody string, and the A, you've got the fourth on the bass, the open middle, the seven on the middle, and the four on the melody. You don't need to know all those, but I would say playing the bass across the strings, this level two operation, it's good to know these to know what your options are. So the level one thing where you just stick to one string, I say get good at that. You'll be learning how to mute the string. You'll be learning how to keep good time, put in those silent things. Um, you're going to get to know where the notes are, learn how to use your amplifier. But for level two, that's when you're ready to go up a notch. So I'm now going to play Bottom Cabbage where I'm not always just plucking that bass string. I'm going to look for notes on the other strings. Um, Bow them cabbage down, boys. Turn the whole kicks round. The only song that I can sing is Bow them cabbage down. And I could play this over and over and have fun going to different locations every time I play the thing. Um, level three. Let's talk about the one and a half fret. There is no marker on this instrument for a one and a half fret, but there is a groove there. The one and a half on the bass and melody gives you an F. And on the middle string, it gives you a C. These come in handy. Uh, C major chord, F major chord. And you know, for so much of what we do, if you're really keeping things simple, you don't necessarily need to worry about if the chord is major or minor. I mean, there definitely is a time for that. But at the most basic levels, you're just playing the root or the, of the chord, uh, the, the letter, the note that starts off the name of the chord, the root. Um, so if you wanted to play in the key of C, you now have a C on the bass string up at six. You have one on the middle string at the one and a half groove. You also have an F, which you need for F major. So I think level three is you, you want to start maybe being aware of all the notes on this thing to some extent, but primarily the one and a half fret I think really comes in handy. Uh, the F's and the C. continually get better at knowing where all the notes are. If you're going to a jam, think about what keys they're likely to be in, what songs they're likely to be playing, and then really rehearse that stuff. 
So everything I've done so far, when there's a chord happening in the song, you're going to find that note on the bass string or the middle or the melody, and you're going to pluck it. And as long as they're on that chord, you just keep hitting that note. And sometimes I do that, but I will say that most of the time I do something else. When a chord is happening, I play the root and I play the note that's called the fifth of the chord. And I'm going to try to give you kind of a shortcut way to figure out what this is. But ultimately, you're going to want to probably write this stuff down or find a reference sheet. What I'm getting ready to show you is not a perfect way to do this, but I think it, it'll work enough where you'll it'll get you going. So I'm going to think about on my uh, on my fingers. Um, anytime a chord is happening, like I said, you can just stick with the root of the chord, the the note that names the chord. But if you'll also include the fifth of the chord you can bounce back and forth between the two. So the first step is what chord and what are the two notes? So let's talk about a D chord. You can put up your fingers, put D on your thumb, and then just count up through the alphabet until you get to your pinky. This is not a perfect way to do this, um, but it will work most of the time. So D and then some kind of E, some kind of F, some kind of G, A. D and A. When a D major chord is going on, the two notes you want to go back and forth between are D and A. Now, in between, I said some kind of E, some kind of F, some kind of G. Sometimes these notes are sharped and flatted, but I'm hoping we can avoid talking about that right now. So for a D major chord, you want to go back and forth between D and A. And you want to start with D. When the D chord begins in a song, don't start with an A. Now, you could, but I'm trying to keep you on the straight and narrow for now. Um, I'm trying to keep it simple. Start on the root and then alternate between the root and the fifth of the chord. For D major, that means D and A. So I have a D and A on my bass string. Uh, so I have D at open and A at the fourth fret. So listen to this. Uh, Notice I'm putting a little mute in the middle. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. When the song changes to a different chord, you will begin on the root of that next chord and then go between that chord's root and fifth. But let's stay on the D major for a second. There's other places to find these notes. Um, for instance, you have a D and an A on your melody string. Same places. You also have an open middle string that is an A. And uh, so you could do the D on either the bass or melody, and then every time you need an A, go to your open middle. Now what starts to get tricky here is isolating the string you're plucking and making sure the other two cannot make a sound. And I, I want to stress how important it is to know that to mute these things, we're not pushing them down. We're just lightly touching them. If you push them down, you might hear a note. So I'm going to do open bass and open middle over and over back and forth. Watch both hands. Since I don't have to fret to get these, my left hand can kind of wander about. I can take out those mutes and just let them ring. A little trickier to do that, I think. Now I'm going to put the rests back in. Now instead of going bass to middle, I'm going to do melody to middle. Because that's also a D to A. And then I might go back to bass and middle. I have a D on the middle string at three, so I can play it on the middle the whole time. The D on the middle, the A on the middle. Back to the open bass, and then the middle. Where you play at first comes down to, you know, you're new and you're just trying to have um, a small number of options. But as you start to expand, you'll find different, playing the D and the A in different places gives you different options. 
What about the G chord? Get your fingers out. G on your thumb, G, some kind of A, B, C, D. Just count through your musical alphabet. In the musical alphabet, there is no H, I, J, K. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. After G comes A again, and it just keeps cycling through. There are sharps and flats. I'm trying to stay away from that right now. So for a G major chord, G and D, that's your root and fifth. When the chord changes, start on the root. So where do I have a G? I could look around, you know, all over, but I'm going to stick with things pretty much fourth fret and lower for now. I have a G on the bass string at three. I have a G on the melody string at three. And then we know where all my Ds are. Open bass, open melody, three on the middle. So I just need to go back and forth between any G and any D. I'm going to do three on the bass, and I'm going to do open bass. Now I'm going to do three on the bass to open melody. And I'm still learning how to mute these strings I'm not plucking. Take some time. I might go to the three on the bass to the three on the middle. It's kind of a little easier on the hand in some respects. I might do a three on the melody to an open melody. Three on the melody to three on the middle, down to three on the bass. Let's look at A major. A on the thumb, B, C, D, E, A and E. A, some kind of B, some kind of C, some kind of D. E, A and E. Well, I have A open middle. I have A on the bass and melody at four. My E's. I have E on the bass and melody at one. And you definitely want to have a sheet in front of you. You know, I, it took me a long time to know where all these notes are on the regular dulcimer. Um, the good news about playing bass is I think you'll learn them quicker because you have to know where they're at. So for A, I might do an open middle to a one on the bass or open middle to one on the melody. Do the A on the bass at four to E on the bass at one, doing it all on the bass string. I might do the open middle, the one on the melody, and the four on the melody. Stay all on the melody. So whatever you're playing, the root is the most important thing you need to know. And I don't think you have to know where everything is on the whole instrument, but I would say roughly fourth fret and, and lower on all the strings. When you're new, you probably just need to know where one E is. You don't need to think about where they're all at. And after you can handle the roots, when you're playing through a song, you want to think about the roots and the fifths for each chord. And if you get online, you can find all kinds of references for this kind of thing, but I'm going to play a little bottom cabbage where I'm just thinking roots, roots and fifths. And I'll just call out the chords. We'll start with a D. One, two, D major. I got a G major. Back to D major. A major. D major. G major. D, A, D. Now what's interesting there at the end of Botham Cabbage is there wasn't enough time to go back and forth between the root and fifth of the chord. And that's very common. Sometimes you only have enough time to hit the root. If you're doing a waltz, this is a little different. Uh, one possibility is just to pluck on beat one of a 3-4 measure and mute uh, beats two and three, or you could let it ring, and you can just do roots. Or you can alternate. On uh, the first beat of one measure, you'll play the root, and the first beat of the next measure, you'll play the fifth. So let me just play a little D major chord and a waltz. So one, two, three, one, two, three, oh, one, two, three, one. All right now I'm just plucking the bass string. Three, oh, one. Now I'll start muting it. One, two, three. 
One, two, three, oh, one, two, three, one. Now I'll start alternating. One, two, three, oh, one, two. So I'm on a D major chord and I'm alternating between the root and the fifth. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two. Go to another D. Two, oh, one, two, three, oh, one. So that's a lot of what you need to get rolling. You want to know where your notes are, and in particular, the notes for the chords you're going to play most often. And once you're good at playing the roots, you really do want to start adding in the fifths, I think. There are other things you can do, um, all kinds of cool stuff. But I think this is a good place to start. Um, be aware if you are slowing down a lot when you're with a group or speeding up a lot, it can create anxiety for everyone. So I do recommend playing along with recordings at home. I mean, a really great strategy would be just record your local jam and then at home play along with that recording. And um, this can prepare you for the timing. In a way, when you're a bass player, you're a leader. You know, if you're not careful, you'll just follow the music and you'll kind of be behind everyone a little, which starts to drag the group down. In some ways, you have to confidently play right on top of the beat or even lean on the beat a little. And what this means is either play right in time with the beat or actually barely, barely, barely play ahead of everyone around you. And I think there's plenty of videos online about timing for bass players, but I want to recommend you practice with good recorded music. Also play with a metronome. Remember, don't be too loud. Have your note reference ready. Make some notes for yourself when you're in this key. What do you do when you're in this key? What do you do? I think after you play a number of songs, three to five songs, you're going to start to get an idea of what you need to work on. Keep in mind for dulcimer, we're so often in the key of D uh, that you'll be doing that a lot. But also we go to the key of G major, A major-ish, A minor-ish kind of keys. We go to E minor sometimes. Uh, we do blues things. Uh, sometimes we play in the key of C. So... I'm going to play just a little more um, by myself, and I'm going to show you some fancier techniques to give you something to think about, and uh, good luck with your bass dulcimer. Thank you. 